And this is a British poem. Uh, it was done in 1932, I think. But um, it's called The Lion and Albert. There's a famous seaside place called Blackpool that's noted for fresh air and fun. And Mr. and Mrs. Ramsbottom went there with young Albert, their son. A grand little lad is young Albert, all dressed in his best, quite a swell, with a stick with an horse's head handle, the finest that Woolworths could sell. They didn't think much to the ocean, the waves, they was fiddling and small, and there was no wrecks and nobody drowned, in fact, nothing to laugh at at all. So, seeking for further amusement, they paid and went into the zoo, where their lions and tigers and hamil, camels and old ale and sandwiches, too. There were one great big lion called Wallace, his nose was all covered with scars. He lay in a somnolent posture with the side of his face to the bars. Now Albert had heard about lions, how they was ferocious and wild. And to see Wallace lion so peaceful, it didn't seem right to the child. So straightway the brave little fella, not showing a morsel of fear, took his stick with his horse's head handle, and shoved it in Wallace's ear. You could see it that the lion didn't like it, for giving a kind of a roll, he pulled Albert inside the cage with him, and swallowed the little lad all. Then Pa, who had seen the occurrence, and, and didn't know what to do next, said, Mother, your lion's at Albert. And Mother said, Ooh, I am vexed. And Mr. and Mrs. Ramsbottom, quite rightly, when all said and done, complained to the animal keeper that the lion had eaten their son. Well, the keeper were quite nice about it. He said, What a nasty mishap. Are you sure that it's your boy he's eaten? Pa says, Am I sure? Here's his cap. The manager had to be sent for, and he came and said, What's to do? Pa said, Yon lion's at Albert, and him and his Sunday clothes too. Then mother said, Right, right there, young feller. I think it's a shame and a sin for a lion to go and eat Albert, and after we'd paid to come in. The manager wanted no trouble. He took out his purse right away, saying how much to settle the matter. And Pa says, oh, what do you usually pay? But Mother had turned a bit awkward when she thought where her Albert had gone. She said, no, someone's got to be summonsed. So that was decided upon. Then off they went to the police station in, <clears throat> in front of the magistrate chap. They told him what happened to Albert and proved it by showing his cap. The magistrate gave his opinion that no one was really to blame and said that he hoped the Ramsbottoms would have further sons to their name. But at that, Mother prop got proper blazing. And thank you, sir, kindly, said she. What? S waste all our lives raising children to feed early lions, not me. You've heard our young Albert Ramsbottom in the zoo up at Blackpool one year with a stick with an horse's head handle gave a lion a poke in the ear. The name of the lion was Wallace. The poke in the ear made him wild. And before you could say, Bob's your uncle, he'd open, he'd swallow the child. He were sorry the moment he'd done it. With children, he'd always been chums. And besides, he'd no teeth in his muzzle. He couldn't chew Albert on gums. He could feel the lad moving inside him as he lay on his bed of dried ferns. And it might have been the little lad's birthday. 
he wished him such happy returns. But Albert kept with kicking and fighting till Wallace arose feeling bad and felt it were time that he started to stage a comeback for the lad. So with his head down in a corner and his front paws, he started to walk. He coughed and he sneezed and he gargled till Albert shot out like a cork. Old Wallace felt better directly and his figure once more became lean. But the only difference with Albert was that his face and his hands came out clean. Said Ma, it just goes for to show you that the future is never revealed. If I'd known thought we were going to lose him, I'd have not had his boots show, sold and yield. Let's look at the bright side, said Father. What can't be helped must be endured. Every cloud has a silvery lining, and we did have young Albert insured. A knock at the door came that moment, as father these kind words did speak. Twas the fair man from the Prudential. He had called for the Tuppens per person per week. When father saw, saw who had been knocking, he laughed and he left, kept laughing so that the young man said, What's there to laugh at? And Pa said, You'll laugh and awe when you know. Excuse him for laughing, said Mother, but really things happen so strange. Our Albert's been hit by a lion, and you got to pay us for a change. Said the young fellow from the Prudential, Now, cum cum, let's understand this. You don't mean to say that you've lost him. Oh, we know where he is. When the young man had heard all the details, a bag from his pocket he drew and paid them with interest and bonus, the sum of nine pound four and two. Pa scarce got his hands on the money when the face at the window they see and mother said, Oh, look, it's Albert. Father says, I oh, it would be. Young Albert came in all excited and started his story to give and Pa says, I'll never trust lions again, not as long as I live. The young fellow from the Prudential to pick up the money began and Father says, hey, just one moment, don't be an hurry, young man. Then giving young Albert a shilling, he said, here, pop off back to the zoo. Take your stick with his horses and handle and see what the liar tigers could do.